Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, another entry here based on your past suggestions. This one having to do with a creature that I normally wouldn't necessarily talk about because it does seem very, very similar to an all-star type cryptid, but it seems that these type of cryptids, whenever I talk about them, they seem to be pretty popular, so I thought I would mix it in here for you. Another suggestion that's over two years old, if you can believe it. So it was great to dig into the archives and then bring up this particular suggestion. So it has to do with a cryptid that to this day is apparently a pretty popular touristy cryptid. The location that it's at, a lot of people go there just for it, which kind of adds a little suspicion on my end into how much that local area seems to generate rumors of this cryptid for more financial reasons, but I'll talk about that here in a, in a minute. And it has to do with this, a cryptid that's known as the, I hope I'm saying it right, Aia Napa Sea Monster, or other times, for some reason, it's called the Auli. I don't know exactly why it has two very strange names, but in either case, I'm going to go with the Aia Napa Sea Monster as the more friendlier term uh, and that way uh, that's the one that I'm going to use throughout this video. So what is this Aia Napa Sea Monster? Well again it's a cryptid that seems to be found in the waters particularly off the coast of a place called Aia Napa, hence the name of it, there in Cyprus which you're looking at at least a picture of the sea monster here. So the, uh, immediately you'll see why I didn't necessarily want to talk about it um, because again it looks very similar to the Loch Ness Monster. Um, there's a variation of it though that makes it seem a lot more different. In fact it looks much like, um, and I was thinking about this too, about King Ghidorah, uh, Ghidorah I'm sorry, uh, from the Godzilla world. So uh, you'll see that illustration here later on. But in the other cases this though is its main interpretation. Cyprus by the way is located somewhere around the Greek area so um, in fact you're looking at a location of it here. And what makes this also very fascinating is that if you go there, specifically to try to find this creature, this monster, when you do so, there's a very, very specific location that this thing is located. I love it when cryptids have this trait within them, whenever they harbor one very spot, a particular spot, because there's, there's always that idea that you can go there and you can enjoy it and you'll have a good chance of seeing this cryptid because that is its home. In this case, it's this location. It's called the Cape Greco or the Cavo Greco as it's called there. That is its home apparently. That's the location that has a very popular tourist set of spots all tailored towards encouraging tourists to come over to try to find it because that is the location that the locals there state this is where it is this is its home and that's where most of these locals have stated the sightings in fact there's so many that they're considered countless sightings if you can believe it even the newspapers there um, have attributed many stories with this monster. In fact, so much so that they call it its own Loch Ness. They call it the Cypress Loch Ness there. Now, as far as its looks and its characteristics, just think of it like any other sea monster. Unfortunately, there's no real hard evidence of it. There's no detailed, let's say, set of photographs, let alone video for it. I only found one photograph pertaining to it, and even then, that's kind of hard to say that that is it and not rule away anything else. Um, also, there's that variation I was mentioning earlier. There's the idea that it looks like a traditional sea serpent, but other times it seems to have a huge difference. Like it has either six or many, many more heads to it. So, uh, and these heads all have their own serpent-like neck with either a dog-like head or some kind of, uh, let's say, a traditional sea monster type head. And then its body seems to have either several arms or different arms, different number of arms. It just depends, I guess, on 
how many people have seen it that way. So quite a bit different than, than the usual circumstance where people just see it more like one Loch Ness Monster with one head. No, in other cases, they say that it looks much different. Many other heads, as many as 12 four limbs, if you can believe it. And uh, that's at least based on those eyewitnesses. If you wanted to get an idea of how it's supposed to look like, it's supposed to look like one of the monsters that was betray portrayed within ancient, um, I guess, Greek drawings. Um, people might say that it's uh, Skyla, if I'm not mistaken. That's the mythical sea monster that it seems to be portrayed as. So that's if you wanted an idea of how it's supposed to look like based on eyewitness accounts, that's the closest as well. Interestingly enough, despite all this, like it being a giant sea monster and in some cases having many heads and it looking very ferocious, again, based on some of the drawings and depictions that you've seen here, it's very friendly. So much so that it's called the way it translates there as the friendly monster. This is because it has never attacked anybody, has never caused any type of harm to people. It seems to just simply enjoy its own existence away from people and then if it even comes across it, it seems to just flee. Like it, it, it absolutely does not do any harm. So much so that even by accident or maybe on purpose, but if it gets caught in any kind of fishing nets, rather than having some huge ha havoc and pandemonium occur to whoever caught it, which it could clearly do considering its size. No, instead it just simply rips the net and then uh, runs away and then, or swims away in this case as quickly as possible. So that gives you an idea of how much the locals there seem to respect this creature so much so that they call it again the friendly monster. But that's it. Not much info really as far as any other sightings or very specific sightings there's also the notion that in some cases the government there the local government has tried to find it before I don't didn't see much information about that afterwards so I don't know how much that was actually true but as far as the tourists and the tourism industry there I was mentioning it earlier here's my opinion on it I do think that there is a little bit of more of an ulterior motive with regards to these sightings. Um, obviously, like the Loch Ness monster, I mean, it has become its own phenomenon. People go there to this day specifically just for that. It's become like its mainstay. Like, uh, there's a term in Vegas that I'm trying to remember. I think it's called like a de uh, whenever you think of like going to Vegas to see Celine Dion or Elton John, they become destination uh, trips like they become destination shows very same concept with the Loch Ness like it's become so huge that this Loch Ness monster that people go to that very tiny area just for the Loch Ness I think that this location seems to be trying to do the same thing because the fact that there's so little evidence of its existence but the locals still especially the tourism industry and the hotels there because apparently the hotels seem to boast constantly that 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 their location is the closest one to the sightings. Can't you see an ulterior motive? How how the locations there may want all of this to happen and continue to happen to try to bring in more people to stay. The money stays there. People go to the restaurants there. They buy the little trinkets, the little gifts. The tips are left for anyone in the service industry there. It all definitely adds to something else. It just it stood out too much for me to not mention it, but. I could be wrong, 100% wrong, but at least that's what I think with regards to having so little evidence of this creature being there, despite the fact that that if you go there, though, you hear otherwise. Like, it's always there. It's a great spot, especially if you go to that cave of sorts, how you have a really good chance of seeing it. It just seems to me like it's something else. So, anyways, those are just my thoughts. Uh, but if anyone has any more information about this Aiyanapa sea monster, about this very, very interesting monster, please post those comments below. It would be great to hear if anyone knows anyone that has gone there before, maybe has even seen something. That would be good to hear. One other final thing, um, there's the idea also that all these sightings, they it may not be necessarily nefarious instead just innocently enough mistaken identity because others have stated that it could just be a very large crocodile 
that's just swimming around that area and then based on the waters and based on the angles people see it as something else or maybe even a giant serpent like an actual snake uh, one of those giant ones that people see it again from different angles and think of something else and that could be another angle too so anyways alright everybody thanks again as always take care